Okay, today we're going to do Molex connectors. Molex connectors are used on general aviation aircraft, uh, Cessnas, for instance. Uh, with the general aviation aircraft, um, we're going to use a, it's a slightly different pin. It's a different pin setup where the pin, when you crimp it, a lot of the uh, stress is hit the, uh, it's, it's shared between the insulation and the actual wire strands themselves. So we're going to um, show you the different type of crimpers and of course the different pin and the different installation and removal tools. We'll run through that. So really simply, this is a 20 gauge wire and I'm going to use some 18 to 20 gauge pins, molex pins. When I strip, you're going to find that you, you uh, just similar to an MS connector, you're not stripping very much. Stripping, you can see how very little I stripped because when I place the wire into the pin, the thing I need to do is I'm going to lay the insulation so the outer band, the outer uh, crimp is going to uh, hit the insulation and the inner band is going to lay and crimp onto the wire itself, the wire strands. So now that that's uh, stripped, I got my pin here, I have my Molex pin, my Molex tools. They're a little bit different than what we've covered so far with crimpers. And you can see with the pins, I have 28 to 24 gauge, obviously too small for this. I have 24 to 20, still too small, because this is an 18 gauge pin, 18 to 16. I know it says 18 to 20. You might have to experiment with the, with the uh, Molex pins that you have and the wire size you use. I'm going, and uh, 24 to 20 just over it, and it's, it's obvious when you do it. 18 to 16, that's the guy. So 18 to 16, I'm going to take my pen, <clears throat> and with the pen, you lay the back side of the pen up against the teeth themselves. So here I'm taking it, and it's a little unnatural. Most people want to, and technicians, want to lay this down in this cavity because it seems to fit. But it doesn't fit because it actually lays up against this wire stop. It's hard to see, but there's a little piece of metal here, a wire stop, that's designed to stop the wire. So I'm going to lay this up against the wire stop and I'm going to start this thing. I'm going to close it partially, make sure it's up, uh, up against the wire stop itself, itself and it gets started. There we go. Now I can simply take my wire, guide it up to the wire stop and begin to crank. Open her up and then you need to inspect. What I'm looking for is to make sure the outer, uh, outer contact, basically wrap the band, wrapped around the wire insulation, and that the inner folded up and it folds over and in into the wire. And I want to make sure I have a very good contact. And then I also want to make sure the wire is not protruding too far into the body and where I have strands sticking out. But I can see it. I can see the wire. And then finally I give it a tug test and it looks good. The strain is now shared between the insulation on the outer band and then the inner contact, inner conductor, is also banded and, and strapped down. So I'll have good electrical connection. Alright, that's a good connection. With these Molex uh, pens, they have little flared out tabs. Tabs that flare out, and that's your locking mechanism with these things. These are front release connectors. Meaning, I'm going to release it with a tool that's stabbed into the front end. Here's my connector. This is a female socket, female pin. I'm going to shove it into the back to lock it. And if it won't lock, because many times you can't lock it because of the small gauge, you have different tools you can use. When you buy these different Molex tools, they come in actually various shapes and sizes. I can use this type that basically um, you have two ends, one with like a little spoon that you can go over the top of the wire and just shove down. Or you have, for the really small pins, it has a very uh, uh, narrow like spike that you can uh, press down. Or you have this type that goes over the wire and you can simply slide down and press in. I like these because they don't damage. And then you have a fork type, right? So now that's pushed in and it's seated and it looks good. It's locked, give it the tug test. Now I want to unlock it. I go out to the aircraft and I need to unlock it. In order to unlock it, I'm going to use, um, here it is, I'm going to use this extraction tool. Extraction tool is nothing more than a, uh, a cylinder that goes over the top of the socket 
When I get it over the top of the socket, I shove this and then I press down on the handle that's spring loaded and pushes the pin out. Now these aren't always the easiest thing to, to unlock. I need to get over the top of the pin and then I'm working on pushing it in and you heard that little snap? Those are those tabs. I'm bending those tabs in. If you get the tabs locked up against the body, you need to pull this back a little bit, hold the wire, and then press and spin a little bit to get that unlocked. Once I feel like it's unlocked, I simply push the handle up to unlock the, to unlock the pin. And it, it's a bear sometimes. You have to get it in there pretty good and press. You press it and you can see that it unlocked. So when I put the body of this tool over the socket and it's hard to press just hanging onto it, and you have to compress those tabs in. You gotta push pretty good. And then finally this piece, spring-loaded piece, pushes out, put knocks the pin out. And that's your Molex connector, your Molex crimp. So now go ahead and give that a try.